I'm out here with Michaela Rose, NCAA champion and LSU star 800 runner. Today you're out here in Miami. You're just chilling this weekend. Yeah. How you been feeling after that indoors? Oh, you know, indoor season it was a it was full of blessings and surprises. Um, I'm very grateful for the time that I was able to get. Uh, definitely was disappointed after you know nationals getting second. That wasn't the goal. Neither was the time. But you know, I'm I'm proud that I was able to step out there and give my best and run another 159. And it was an incredible race, to be honest. Like every single time I race, I feel like it was something fun. So that's something I'm grateful for. I mean, it's great to be um, disappointed after a second place yeah. at NCs, yeah. which is my highest place I've ever gotten, by the way. <laughs> so, I mean, that just truly really shows yeah. um, how high you are, how good you are. You signed an NIL recently with Adidas. How was that process going through the NIL? That's new. I've never went through it myself yeah. during my years. How was that process? You know, it was defini it's definitely new, and I feel like that's why it, it kind of took a while because my mother and my father, they really wanted to make sure I capitalized on uh, getting the best possible thing for me. So, so that's kind of why it took a while, yeah. guys. I know some people were asking questions. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the process, it it was pretty rough. I, I've had my coaches help me, you know, with um, some marketing assistance, giving me some pointers on like, hey, this, this person's pretty great. They'll help you out with getting deals with certain brands. And then um, overall, when I met with the team, Adidas team, I just knew that they were the one for me. They are very, they're very kind hearted people. They have your best interests at heart. So it's not really that you're a product, but you're a person that they want to help excel. Yeah, and Adidas have been snatching everybody up off the market. Yeah. And you mentioned just now the marketing assistant that worked with you to get the deal. Help me understand a little bit and anybody yeah. else who doesn't understand how athletes go about getting the process. How do you go about finding a marketing assistant that will reach out with brands, <laughs> reach out to brands on your behalf? So, you know, I feel like there's there's a lot of um, people out there who agencies this is what it's called. But as an NIL athlete, you have to call it assistance, marketing mm -hmm. assistance. Yeah. So people who would go out there and put your name for brands to see and, you know, capitalize on them. Uh, giving you a deal or whatnot and I feel like connections like especially here at LSU I had coach Shaver and you know he's been in the game for a while so he, he knew a lot of people and he knew that um, Paul my uh, marketing assistant he was a great person so when I met him I knew that he would have been the best one for me but for athletes looking uh, for assistance out there just you know keep doing what you're doing and you know it's not necessarily that you need to have it but it definitely helps because they have an insight on um, different companies and stuff that you can you can get money from. And a big part of it is performance, right? Oh, yeah, you're that's you're, that's you're literally <laughs> a, um, a multiple-time SEC champion. You're a national champion. But let's talk about performance a little bit. Just like me, you switch events. Yeah. You were a four hurdler, and a lot of people don't know that. You're so good at the 800, they kind of forget about the four hurdles. I mean, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about that switch. How did that come about? Um, So, you know, I've always been an 800 meter runner. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my 400 hurdle debut in sophomore year in high school. I mm -hmm. think I ran like a 58 something. I think it was pretty good, and that kind of got some talk about, oh, she could do the four hurdles. Then freshman year, they, they really just developed me in 800. I ran it one, I ran the 400 hurdles one time and I, I PR'd, I did well. Yeah. But you know, my coaches, they knew that I had something in the 800, which I did. I didn't do well the freshman year, but I feel like at US trials, when I tried out for the 800, I didn't make it. And I also tried out for the four hurdles. I did make it on that one. Yep. So it was some talk around that. And I ended up getting third at Worlds 56. Yep. So that was that was a great time. But uh, my heart lies with the 800, honestly. I, I love the four hurdles. And, you know, I, I kind of wish that I had a little bit more time to develop with it. But this year, for sure, I'm, I'm going to just focus on the 800. Mm -hmm. So world junior bronze medalist in the 400 hurdles. You've had success from the junior level. Now you're at college. You signed with NIL with Adidas. Talk to me about what an other high school athletes do to be as successful as you, <laughs> making that transition from high school to pro to now semi-pro in a way with the NIL. You're right, you're right. Uh, I would say, you know, trust the process, trust God. Make sure you are giving your best at practices. Never slack off at practice. And I, I really think one thing that really helped me is engaging with my coaches because they have like your best interests um, for you and if you really trust their plan for you and like don't like resist because some athletes they be like i know my body more like i feel like i should be there they're your coach for a reason god put them in that position for a reason so you know if you trust god you need to trust your coach as well and you know i just feel like i really zoned in on that so whatever coach franks told me to do i went and did it whether it was cross country or 1500 I did it and I really 
I've improved in so many different events. I've improved in practices. I've gotten stronger. So I really feel like that's one thing that has helped me improve and uh, drop my times and be noticed on championship races too. Nice, nice. So you've mentioned God a few times. Obviously, you're a believer in Christianity. Yeah. How does this develop within your track and field career? How do you get it involved and how does that work for you? So, you know, first and foremost, Jesus Christ is everything for me. Um, he's done so much like there's a lot of mental things that happen in a person's life that people on the outside, they don't know. So just be kind in general to people. But also, if you are dealing with that type of stuff, you, you need to know that Jesus has your best interest for you. He has he has nothing but love. So uh, I just know that I zoned in on learning to gain a relationship with him on a personal level and I really prioritized my my time with him especially especially freshman and sophomore year because that was like my first year without my parents you yeah. know leading me towards him it was now my own time with him I had to make my own efforts to go towards him and go to church and seek counseling from the pastors on campus and the chaplain so I just really feel like you have to prioritize Jesus so if you do that, he's going to he's gonna guide you um, through the ups and downs, even when races weren't going well, even when you have injuries, because freshman year I, I had an Achilles injury. Yeah, Some yeah. people may not know about that, but it really uh, hurt me and it made me struggle in some races, uh, but I just remember I continued to trust the process, my coach, yep. uh, trust God, and continue to do whatever he puts me uh, in place to do. That's beautiful. I mean, I love to hear that you have that solid foundation of belief that helps guide you through your competing and in life in general. Um, switching gears a little bit, I want to talk a little bit more about just finances. How do you manage that? You're now a college athlete yeah. with a professional contract. How do you deal with finances? Who helps you with this type of stuff? Who guides you and help you learn about, you know, what to do with your money, what not to do with your money? Well, you know, I feel like maybe I, I had a great upbringing yeah. because I'm not one to spend too much. Okay. Uh, You're not buying that Louis V? No. Gucci. <laughs> no, I actually kind of make fun of my teammates for doing that. I, I don't really know, but I feel like if you buy stuff that's uh, just brands and designers just because it's like... Yeah. What are you doing that for? I, I know I have a future goal for okay. things, so I try not to spend on anything. Okay, too tell us, tell us a little bit of future goal. We're we looking at a Ferrari, uh, a, a ten bedroom house. Uh, I like. Okay, so houses are getting more expensive, guys. Yeah. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, so a house, I would like to purchase my own house. Okay, that's nice. Um, and I feel like so I like cars, but when I was younger, I had a I had a huge plan to get a bunch of cars, mm -hmm. but you know we we all settle for a few yeah. because that's just how the way it is right now yep. i do like lincoln's that's a that's a pretty expensive okay. car i didn't expect that a lincoln yeah, a lincoln. yeah a lincoln. That grandma sold <laughs> oh come on <laughs> they recently came out with the pink one i gotta look up the name for it but uh, send, I, send me that picture i'm gonna drop it here <laughs> y'all are funny uh but yeah you know I, I like expensive things but not enough to spend it on my own but if you would like to gift me <laughs> I, I would gladly accept it <laughs> all right nice nice i mean definitely it would NIL and more money being circulated in college, yeah. people definitely need to be a lot more cost conscious. I mean, I know financial literacy isn't something that is very spread right now, but I'm glad you have people in your corner yeah. that's guiding you towards that. So, I mean, I'm happy to talk to you about a lot more things. We're looking forward to seeing you the rest of the season. Yeah. But one thing I need to know before I leave, how much miles do you run per week? <laughs> About 45. Jesus Christ. I, I think, I feel like freshman year was like 39. Oh. Okay. Uh, we started the season up again. I, I feel like I was around 40 this this um, this past week. It was kind of an off week though. So. Is there any is there any cross training in that? <laughs> um, yeah, usually I do at least one day a week. If not cross training, I'm on the Alter G. It's like okay. a anti gravity treadmill. Yeah, I'll drop a little picture for you guys yeah. to understand what Alter G is. Pretty I had cool. to use that back in the days too. Yeah. All right, Michaela, it was nice talking to you. Nice Looking talk. forward to seeing you for the rest of the season. And of course, the Olympics must be your goal, right? Yep, that's 2024. Paris, trying to make the team. Definitely want to see you on the team. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank we'll you. definitely talk again. Thank you so much.